welcome to the very first video for Western Long Boxing. Um, the first video that really discusses or at least goes into how we begin our lessons on this online training course, which will culminate in a, uh, a uh, terminal lesson and testing for all the individuals who are a part of this online training session. And um, it will be in Orlando in March of 2000, Orlando, Florida, in March of 2014. And this is going to be a great day, and I get to meet uh, all of my fans and everybody else. But the bottom line is, um, this is my first online course I'm teaching. <laughs> At least not the first. I did it for the Army, and I did it for other people, but it's the first one I'm doing actually formally um, for an actual event. It's outside of my books or anything like that, even though I have a book that's going to go with it. Uh, Western Long Boxing, the Integration of Taoist and Vedic, Pug Vedic Pugilistic Internal Alchemy. And uh, that book basically is a follow-on from the uh, Art of Western Tai Chi Chuan, which is a book that uh, just talked about me training people and how to do a lot of this stuff, but not with, not with as much knowledge as I have right now because it's about seven, eight years later. So I have a lot more knowledge. Jeez, it's almost actually... It's, it's almost 10 years later. So <clears throat> uh, this video right now is going to talk, deal with standing and seated meditation. Begin you on that process of standing and seated meditation. It begins out uh, with a, with a silk reeling first. You do some silk reeling, and silk reeling is really important. Um, uh, for all of you who are seasoned martial artists, um, the kidney is everything. Why is the kidney everything? It's everything for longevity. Uh, as everyone has always said, Dr. Love says, who's a, um, uh, part of the Temple Underground radio station, uh, shows, um, his is Dr. Love, um, again, Dr. Love, oh no, it's, uh, the Blue Dragon Speaks of Dr. Love, um, the voodoo we do in martial arts, which is, uh, Sifu Ripsky, and then, of course, the Breeding Institute show with, uh, Drs. Lan and Drs. Uh, uh, Andrew, and in these shows, they all say the kidney, the kidney is everything. Okay, it's for longevity, and um, every, almost all the qigong we do is for the kidney. Now, when you move certain ways and breathe in, you affect every every part of the body. In the things we're doing right now, you're going to affect a lot of parts of the body, and it gets complicated. In the book, we discuss it very big, but for the vid, for the, uh, the scope of this video, you just need to be able to know what to do. Everyone has our qigong. There's standard qigong, such as the standing and seated a, and seated brocade. Okay, you can do those. There's nothing wrong with those. I've done them myself. I do them from time to time. Um, you can do the six healing breaths, which is good too. I do those quite often. Um, but the exercise I'm showing you right now, these are for exercises that's going to warm you up for stilling meditation. And in the Western Long Boxing System, stilling meditation is the foundation for everything, as you're going to hear again throughout this video. This video is almost an hour long. So again, work with me. When you are listening to this video, when you are doing A, when you're first listening, always sit. Sitting is important. Get yourself used to sitting. Simple standard. One hour. If you can sit for one hour, the magic begins. Some people say in Kridio and Kadriog Taiji in Estonia with Master Grigori, he says 40 minutes. Or my teacher, my teacher was a student of his, who is uh, Nadia Shermakova. She says after 40 minutes, that's when the magic happens. Uh, for the standards that I've established for Western long boxing, let me tell you something. It is literally one hour. The simple test, one hour of sitting, one hour of movement. If you can sit for one hour, if you can move for one hour continuously, you got something going on. And if you can do both of these things without raising your metabolism or lowering your metabolism, basically you remain in a hermetic state. Sorry, um, you remain in a state of constant of consistency um, without homeostasis. Your homeostasis, the uh, homostatic. Uh, system, the way you maintain heat and cold, if everything stays the same while you're doing this, not much of a raise or at least doesn't affect you anyway, you know you're on the way to true power. When I say this, I'm not saying this alone. In the uh, in uh, the book, Illustrated Explanations of, of uh, Chen Tai Chi, um, Chen, tai Chi fa Chen Family Tai Chi Chuan, um, Chen Zing says this immediately. One in, within the first parts of the book, he says, true power is stilling. If you can still yourself, you have power. From there on, you can do almost everything. Then the stilling is in almost everything you do, okay? And this is power. 
and it looks a certain way when you do it. Even when I'm speaking to you now, I'm in a seated position. I'm making sure I'm keeping my heat in. Heat is very important. Things that are dead are cold. Things that are hot or heated are alive. And this is something you need to keep, keep track of. Without getting off the scope, we first discussed what we do first, silk grilling. Silk grilling literally in the three-step process, which is the three treasures, okay? The first of those treasures is gathering essence, normally by controlling your sex, um, your sexual drive, and knowing some techniques to be able to gather essence in the lower dantian, which is the dantian which is fed by exercise and food and nourishment and air. Air is all three, but air is important with the first one. The next one, once you gather that, once you gather it, everything's good to go in gathering it. Then you have to, you have to, um, and that's normally done seated. Normally gathering energy is a seated process. It doesn't always have to be that way. You can lay down. But for those of us who want to master posture, for those of us who want to master the Western long boxing system, seated is everything. Once you master your seated, the guys can say what they want, okay? Once you've mastered your seated postures, you're going to begin to get power over your body, believe me. So, plus you're opening up a lot of areas in the body that, really allow it to be open so that you can actually really have control over what you're talking about. So that's the first thing, gathering energy. The next is to take the energy and to refine it. Refining energy is normally done in a standing posture, which you're going to see in the next part. Okay. You'll see me actually after the silk rolling, which we're talking about then. Standing pot, let's talk about later. But standing posture is what you're going to do. Standing posture motions, normally pole standing. You've seen it before, um, uh, holding the kettle or holding the tree. Um, this is important exercise. You can do the Santi exercise. You can do almost all of the uh, six gates of Tai Chi, okay, and find it here, 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 um, splitting, shoulder. You can almost do every single one of shoulder, uh, elbow. You can posture in any one of those, and you're going to be able to activate certain parts of your body, which is necessary to keep yourself healthy. But the bottom line is, uh, standing postures are, are very important. We do them. Um, in the article that you talk, that I'm showing to you about or talking to you about in uh, Temple Underground Magazine and Journal, the article uh, about the Western Long Boxing, believe me, it's right there. Um, now, the next one is the one you're going to see first in the video, which is silk reeling. Okay? To soup. And silk reeling, okay, is how we vitalize the body. It's how we, we um, show vitality. We show the, how, how the energy we're using, we've gathered the energy we refine through the uh, essence that we've gathered, we're showing how we're expressing it. And silk grilling is the best way to show how it's expressed. Even if you do Tai Chi form, you should be doing silk grilling in that form. I don't believe in forms anymore, even though I have them to teach people. I don't believe them unless, of course, you've got a, a something weighted in your hands. Something's in your hands, either a sword, uh, some weight, something. If so, a feather, something light, something heavy. As long as something's in your hands, okay? This is good. Then you can, you're all right. You can do form. Other than that, in Western long boxing, though we have it, and you read about it through the stuff, form is not as important as being able to apply what it is you know. Form is a tool to teach people how to move, but form must match up to function. In this particular video, your silk grilling, okay, the one function it's for, the most important function the silk grilling is for, is to open up the the kidneys to make sure the kidneys. Are, are, are working. That's what it's mostly for. It is a silk willing in the sense that you're looking at it right here is definitely and almost positively for making sure that your kidneys are functioning beautifully, that you are stimulating them, that you're making them work. And almost every motion that you're doing in it is all about that. So please, please keep that in mind. After that, we're going through some techniques that I've written about in my book, The Western Art of Western Tai Chi Chuan, which are massages. I've gotten a lot of help with my massages. One of the helps I got was just recently with talking to um, the Ma family, um, this is a lineage holder, uh, Sifu Neil, the Kung Fu guy, Ripsky, who gave a brilliant uh, discussion and talk in his show, The Voodoo We Do, the last show he did in, um, in uh, April um, 2014. Uh, beautiful show about his yin, yin, oh, actually the three treasures, as it was taught to him by his master, Master Ma, and uh, Master Chin, Master Chin, and um, he's going to teach that, he's going to teach, I'm oh, sorry, he taught that to me on the radio show, I, I recognized an awful lot of it, and what it did was reinforce a lot of things that my teacher, Kari Madonna, taught me, and my other teachers in the military taught me about Qigong, 
Okay, so, and also, uh, Donald Wall taught me about Qigong when the Wu style, yada, yada, yada. But the bottom line is this. Um, we're, I do some standing techniques that I think you need massages that I think you all need to follow. Please do. And the last thing you're going to see is me seated. And when I seat, you're going to get that video about the seating, and that's no problem. But make sure you follow the directions of what it is that we are doing. Okay, and now I'm going to, uh, hey, hey, you got what you needed. Uh, this is the introduction to the video. Okay, very happy to talk to you about it, and I really hope that uh, you enjoy this video. It's a long video, okay, but it's something that you need to know. And, uh, hey, enjoy it. Please listen to the voiceover. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do, um, and if there's any th captions coming up, follow that too. Have a great day. The energy flows within a channel and through a network of the internal and the external of what we are and will be. They all become one when a person moves with a spherical groove. The substantial and the insubstantial become movements of which one abounds in the joy they have found. One channel runs from the front of the left hand through to the back of the right, then wraps around the front of the right hand and returns through the back of the left. The ebb and flow of a rotating globe to refine the divine treasure of collected energy, done so from within and without. No doubt the spiraling power that constructs our essence creates a synergy that allows us to be. Another channel accumulates energy from the inner left side of the body and the back towards the right side. A balance of forces coalescing so that entropy dies and we may live. There is also a channel through which energy returns to be accumulated in the back with twists and turns, it gives us our snap, our vitality, our ability to get it when we need it. All the energy channels function optimally when specific postures and bodily movements are performed naturally and smoothly. It is the intent and the spirit that moves me. When the hand chi flows from the heel to the big toe, one knows that the loop is closed and the energy gathered to be used. One may take a firm stance on this knowledge and continue to be and continue to do the life dance of Silk Reilly, the life dance of Tai Chi. Although meanwhile, Intrinsic forces produced in the mind heart enters one's bones and fills the skin with a glow, coalescing the body into a singular stream of power. This intrinsic force is the chi that comes out from the mind heart. With this knowledge, now you have a time to start, a reason to start a cause to commit to. You can now dance the life dance of Tai Chi.
Wu Ji, with palm open, with Jing Lo, mind control, sending air in and out the palm. Palms are placed over the eyes, breathing out through the palm and in through the eyes. The eyes are said to be the windows of the soul. Therefore, they must be treated as such. From the energy here, we stroke and massage down the face, bringing the energy from the eyes to the various and very important parts of the face. We slap the trapezoid trapezius muscle and we massage down the outside of the arm, the inside of the arm and then wipe and massage down the, the uh, inside of the uh, arm, the armpit, all the way down. Then we stretch overhead. We go back into a Uchi stance, breathing in and out of the palm, in and out of the palm. We're getting ready to work on the center part of the body, the torso. So we warm it up with a bunch of crunches. The crunches are quick, but good. You should do at least 30 per each section, legs down, legs back up. First thing we do after the breathing is we bring and touch the back, we put our palms, we imagine the palms breathing out and then breathing in through the kidneys. Breathing out through the palm and in through the kidney. Then we take that energy and we move it. Left and right sides, and this one just the left. From the back all the way to the navel. Do this on both sides. Then we pat both sides. Getting the energy on the girdling meridian. Moving and circulating. Body needs this, feels this, wants this. Again, back to the Wuji. Breathing in and out the palm until we feel heat in the center of the palm. Center of the palm. Then we begin a massaging. Okay? Massaging the buttocks, the outside of the legs, and then the inside of the legs. This is important to get the legs moving. The sequence of how you do it is just as important, but make sure that you feel it first. <laughs> Even though it's not mentioned, it's important that you stretch. A nice hang stretch, touching your toes, feeling your flexibility. Don't push it and go into your seated squat just to practice. Come back up and do your wuji, breathing in and out the palms until you feel the heat in the center of the palm. Next, you want to bring your leg up, work on your balance and your stretch or your hip and your joints, preparing yourself for a long, good, stilling meditation while seated, and begin your alternate nasal breathing, which is a balancing technique. You're balancing the inside of the body while you're balancing the one side of your leg, balancing your legs and gaining strength in that way, stretching, moving, sinking, and then move right back down into alternate nasal breathing, into a squat, which of course is helping the kidney. You should feel the breath all the way back into your kidneys. Alternating from breathing in and out, I do nine times on each nostril, in left nostril and right nostril. Then do the other side, same thing. Really important, get that stretch, both sides. And then honker down. And begin the breathing process. In and out each nostril, three to nine times, each side. And back into your seated, into your squatted posture, doing that same side and same hand. And doing a good alternate nasal breathing process. Very, very important. This again, balances the body. 
once I'm done with this, some people do it before, I do it after. I massage the knees. Okay, you can do it both. You can do it before or after. But I massage the knees. Making sure that I work myself nice and slowly into it. Anything I did to them prior to, warming them down. A lot of people do it standing up and they work their way down. Neil Wipsky does it this way. He works his way into it. I do it this way. I've done this before even though I listened to the show and kind of acted like I didn't know. I actually had this technique in my own arsenal. He re, re, re articulated some things that needed to be done, and one of them is being able to stretch enough to kiss that one knee. Once you massage down, kiss that knee. There's all kinds of things happening when you do it. Please write me and let me know what you felt when you did it. Next is the plank. I plank myself out. Okay? First part of my plank is a downward dog, which you find in Vedic Hatha Yoga. And I do a downward dog. Okay? Here you'll see me do it and move around. My breathing is even. Sometimes I try to do a Vedic breath, which is breathing out with extended stomach and then back in. And then I do it the opposite direction uh, with the reverse breath. I did the same thing with a downward, uh, the upward dog, where I am on my toes and my hands, and I don't touch the floor of my, my mill, but my butt sinks to the ground, and my uh, pelvis is down really almost close to the ground, but not quite stretching out my lower back in the opposite direction that it was before. Okay, good stretch. And then I go into a regular plank with feet flat on the ground, not on my toes. And I just hold a nice plank there. Okay, you're on your arms for a long time, but arms need to be worked. They need to be strengthened. And this is one of the ways you do it. If you don't want to do push-ups, which you don't have to do, okay, you can do a static posture. You're going to get very strong, very strong doing it. Okay. And you'll see me shift around here. And even though I won't do the complete series, I normally shift around three times. I shift around to the left and back around to the right. Shift around to the right and back around to the left. I hit each clock position. Okay. Give my arms a chance to work a little bit. It's good for me. The next motion that you see me do is uh, basically a preparation for a headstand. Okay, the headstand is really important. Besides giving the body a lot more strength by inverting uh, internal alchemy strength and also uh, also um, physi physiological strength, you are um, strengthening a lot of parts of your body internally a lot. And uh, you can look up exactly what they are for the, scope, for the steps for the scope of this video. You don't need to get into it, but it's important. The head, the headstand, pugilistically is extremely important because it makes the neck strong. It makes the arms strong. It makes everything strong. It makes the blood vessels strong. It works the body with regard to uh, reversing the flow of blood. Even though it doesn't reverse it, it makes the blood vessels work harder, which is a good exercise for them. video we go into breathing now breathing <laughs> is everything instilling and moving meditation it's the foundation of everything that we do in Western long boxing we have to understand that we have to activate our reticular activating system and that's the mud pie in the back of the brain if in the center of the brain if we can do that if we can reach that part of our brain we can control our autonomic nervous systems, our autonomic systems complete. Now, this is important. If you're going to go and do this type of thing, that means you're going to begin a process that you cannot stop. You're going to go into trying to use your intent, your consciousness, to deal with things that your body does unconsciously. In order for you to make sure you don't hurt yourself, you have to have two things. First, you should have an internal medicine doctor, okay, a Western doctor that sees you at least once a year, twice a year, to check on what's going on with you. And before you even get into this, make sure you actually see him, okay, or her. Second, you probably want to have a traditional Chinese medicine doctor that is involved in Vedic and in Taoist medicine, okay? At least have one of both or one that does both. Like I do, Dr. Uh, Will Foster. He does both. And uh, this is important because this is why. And I wrote about this in the article. Actually, I wrote about this online in the Tai Chi Connection and on my own webpage. And I wrote about it again in my book. And I'm writing about it again 
in the article that I just put out, Western Long Boxing, the integration of Vedic and Taoist meditation in the Temple Underground magazine and journal. Now, the re and it's peer review. That means doctors have looked at this and then professionals who do martial arts have looked at this. So you might want to listen since you did buy the course. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. If you start taking over things that, that you do unconsciously, you're going to have to make sure that the things you're doing consciously are being done unconsciously. That means you've integrated fully what it is you're all about. If you don't, you're going to have some complications. The body will expect you to take over functions that it normally does itself. And if you can't do that to the point where you do it unconsciously, we're going to have a problem. As you do this more and more, you become more and more vested in your own health. Being in charge of your own health, as Dr. Love talks about in the Temple Underground Mag sorry, Temple Underground Radio shows, uh, I think it's called The Blue Dragon speaks to Doc speaks to Dr. G. Xavier Love. He tells us, hey, we're supposed to be responsible for our own bodies. And we should be. So, you know, I take responsibility for mine, you take responsibility for yours. That being said, that context and everything, let's talk about what we're going to do in this video, in this one, okay? Here's the deal. <clears throat> the whole point of seated meditation is to stay seated, is to stay still, except for the mandatory movements that you have to do with the breathing technique. You stay still. Now, eventually, this is going to put you in a stiller and stiller mode of operations. Now, when I say modal behavior, again, as I write about, I mean thinking, doing, and feeling. Upper jowl, lower jowl, middle jowl, as um, Sifu Neil Ripsky talks about. When we do these types of, when we, we're doing this type of breathing, okay, sitting is the key. Now, how do you stay sitting? Well, there's lots of ways. How I do it is through focused breathing. The longer I do my focused breathing, the longer I can sit until I really don't need to do it that much at all. So now that we've come to the point where that we understand what we're doing with regard to uh, breathing, why we're doing it, and, and so forth. Not so, much, not so much what, but why we're doing it. Let's talk about what we're doing. We're doing alternate nasal breathing. We're doing balanced breathing, which is a certain set count of no air in the lungs for cessation of breath. And then in, set the same count for breathing in, inhalation, the same count for holding, okay, retention, and then the same count for release. If you need to recover the lung, you do a cleansing breath, which is in the nose, out the mouth, clenched teeth, in the mouth, rolled tongue, or clenched lips, pursed lips, and then out the nose again, okay? That could be a different type of count, but you have to do it. That will cleanse, okay, the air problems. That will cleanse you. That will replenish you, and then you're able to, and also relax your lungs, and then you can do it again. Why the lung? <laughs> the lung is at the very top of the yin organ structure. The lung, everything about it is about descending its power based on function. It's also tied to the limbic system. So in that sense, it helps with the, um, the cleansing of the body, the production of white blood cells. Uh, it has to be rested as well as it has to be strengthened. Pranayama does that. It strengthens the lung and it relaxes the lung and it makes everything stronger. Of course, there's a strong connection between the heart and the lung. There's also a strong connection between the lung and the liver and the lung and the spleen and the lung and the kidneys. I mean, there's a lot of connections with it because it get, it basically nourishes. It nourishes the uh, the bloodstream. It nourishes the body at the blood level. And the blood goes everywhere. As we know, the spleen, okay, is in charge of producing red blood cells, okay? Uh, the white blood cell, excuse me, the liver is in charge of detoxifying the system and storing stuff, storing uh, um, blood, uh, white blood for fight or flight, uh, blood for uh, for extra needs, blood for immune system so that you can fight uh, diseases, and of course the spleen stores red blood cells. So and the, and all that comes from the, the proper function of the, of the lung. In this video, you are going to practice breathing in alternate nasal, in balanced breathing as we just talked about, and then the last one we didn't talk about was ratio breathing. Ratio breathing is breathing in a one for two ratio. That means if you count one for one breath in, you would count another, sorry, one for no breathing, and then one for one breath in, you times that times four, which would be four, four counts of breath retention in, 
and then half that count, which would be two counts, okay, with breath retention out. So if we're going by tens, it would be ten no breathing, ten breathe in for a, a stretch of ten, even counts, hold for forty, and then breathe out for twenty. If that was a count you wanted to use, that's a count that you would do. I do a different count based on mantra, and you can find my mantras in my books. You can find my mantras at my websites, okay, uh, especially the uh, Angels Elder Beast Gym has all my notes in there. You can check it out there. That's for free, okay? You can also check it out in the pamphlet that you're going to get when you sign up for the course, which, of course, is going to be my book, okay? So you can actually look it up there. All different ways to find the mantras. Mantras are important in the sequence of how we do, the sports science way, of how we do um, going into the flow and still in meditation. Otherwise, suppressing the move wave, which is the motion wave, okay? Sorry, lifting the move wave, which is the stillness wave, suppressing the beta wave, which is the moving wave of the brain, or the, when the brain, when the body's moving, that's the wave that, that, that's amped up, the beta wave. And when the body's not moving, it's the move wave, the one that goes side to side. And that one is, uh, is actually raised up when you're stilling, stilling yourself. And then you have the alpha wave, which is always raised up based on your focused attention. So, and you can find that out in the book also. Ratio breathing, balanced breathing, and alternate nasal breathing. Alternate nasal breathing balances the body. Either Pingala, call it what you will, yin and yang, call it what you want to call it. For the simple layman's terms, it helps balance every part of the body. The reason why it does this is because the body naturally Okay, closes off one side nostril so it can breathe on one side and the other side nostril can breathe on the other side naturally. Okay, for night, oh, sorry, for is it 90 minutes? No. It's for three hours every day, normally after you first wake up. Okay, it can do it other times during the day too based on how you feel or whether there's something wrong in your body, whether your body's being uh, invaded by an unbalancing, um, uh, imbalancing uh, um, microbe. Microbi, uh, micro, microtata, microtata, which is what Dr. Miles on uh, the Breathing Institute show talks about. Um, the bottom line is, anytime it needs to be balanced, it closes off. If your body's functioning, it closes off one side or the other no, of the nostrils. If your body needs more um, practice, it will do it more times during the day. During the day, but normally it does it for three hours a day, 90 minutes on the left side, 90 minutes on the right side, helps keep the body functioning. If the body is balanced. It never gets sick. If the body is unbalanced by a microtata that comes into the body, okay, that pulls it off, that makes you sick, okay, the body will try to fight it off first with balancing and then with other ways. But in this sense, by producing white blood cells and so forth. But the bottom line is this: you could actually help facilitate this by actually closing off one nostril yourself, breathing, and then breathing the other, breathing one nostril, hold, sorry, no air, uh, breathe in for five. Hold for five, and then out for five, and then the other side too. Normally, when I do this, I use a thumb, and then I use the fourth, the, the ring finger of my um, ring finger of my hand. You'll see the, the the techniques as we're doing it. Okay, there's a there's a really uh, easy and cyclic way that I do it in this particular video with um, Qi Kong version one that we're doing in this video. Um, Qi Kong and Taoist and Vedic. Um, Qigong and uh, yoga that we're doing in this one. Um, I normally do both nostrils, then left to right side, left side nostril, then left to side, left to right, sorry, left to right hand. With right hand, in this case, it's right hand, left nostril, then right hand, right nostril. And then I come back down, do it again, then I switch hands and do the same thing. And back and switch hands. And I do this in a cycle normally of threes. The first two, I do a, a Vedic breath, which is the stomach opening and opening in the back also, a bell shape around the body. And I do the, the count that we just talked about, normally balanced breathing. And then I reverse it and I do a reverse breath. Where I, it's just, I call the generals to arm, the emperor calls the general to arms, as Neil Ripsky talks about. And I do that one also, uh, same count, balanced breathing. Then I do a normal breath, okay, which is a, a, a Vedic breath. Instead of doing a count of five, I normally do yeah, same thing. I do, I do a ratio of breath, which is normally um, a count of uh, normally about 12. Okay, I go from 12 to 48 to 24. That's my normal count. But the bottom line is, I normally only take about I try to only take about 
two to three breaths every two minutes. Okay, uh, two to three, sorry, sorry, two to three breaths every minute. That's about the, how I breathe. If I break it down to two to three breaths every minute and then to two breaths every minute with the ratio of breathing, I'm doing really well. Okay, normally I can, after I've done this for a while, it gets to break down to me doing about two minutes of breath. And this is a very good thing. If you can stay seated for an hour, then you can do this. Basically, you're doing some very serious breathing and slowing down the body's functioning for one hour. You're going to be an extremely healthy person doing balanced breathing and doing re a regular both nostril breathing or balanced breathing methods using uh, using um, alternate nasal alternate nasal uh, techniques and re and ratio techniques. You are going to be really in really really good shape. And that's what this first version is about. So this is only 12 minutes. It's 12 minutes of work. But this 12 minutes of work is going to go a long way to building up your uh, your understanding and your familiarity with um, with um, uh, stilling meditations. And everything we've done prior to this is prepping you for this. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you practice it and, and to do follow what's being spoken um, with the uh, voice over of the techniques that we're doing. We've now come to the part where we are actually doing stilling meditation. Stilling meditation is all about, at least in the seated posture, it's all about sitting. It's about being able, besides the emotions that you need to use, which are uh, your breathing motions, opening the nose of breathing, touching your hands to your nose, and turning your body to the left or the right. Other than that, your body is still. And it's not just about seating or sitting in a seat, which you can do. It's about mastering an asana. In my sense, in my case, it's just mastering a simple seated asana. I personally love to have my legs tucked with one leg, one foot out, where one foot is getting heated and one's getting cool. But bottom line is, I also like to, to uh, have both legs tucked, depending upon the surface that I'm sitting on. I do use a ball. Um, normally, I, the ball is just for a prop, and it hits my uh, lower, uh, my backbone, my spine, the lower tail, tailbone, my tailbone. But other than that, um, I'm pretty much flat on the ground. Um, I don't use um, a prosperous pose. I don't use a perfect pose. I use a simple pose. Um, though you can use those two poses if you wish to include a lotus. Um, mine's very simple, very clean. Um, and I just I make sure that I can hold that posture for as long as I can without thinking about it. And the way I do it is through breathing. First, the alternate uh, nasal breathing. The alternate nasal breathing is one nostril and the other nostril being breathed through, which I talked about earlier in the, the preview presentation to this segment of the video. What you see here is I'm in a wisdom pose, wisdom mudra pose, uh, hands, uh, forefinger, and thumb touching. And I am doing a balanced breathing for two cycles. Uh, no air in the lungs for five, in the lungs for five, hold for five and out for five. And then I am doing a long count, which would be a, a ratio breathing, which would be no air in the lungs for five, in the lungs for five, hold for 20, and out for 10. And then repeat. Uh, if I need to take a break, I'll do a cleansing breath, which is in the nose, out the mouth, clench teeth, in the mouth, roll tongue, or pursed lips. And then, um, and then um, I would do. do a um, breathing that to uh, out the middle. And uh, forgive me for the interruption. And when we do this, uh, the breathing technique, it's all about focus. Now, yes, with breathing, you're doing a lot of different things. You're doing a lot of things, and we'll talk about that in a second. But mostly, you're using this breathing for a focused attention. And in this focused attention, which is the first part that you got to do, in the focused attention, the very first thing you have to do is focus on the breathing. Make sure that it's continuous. It conforms to the techniques that you're using. Again, the ultimate nasal breathing is for a good reason. Um, you want to make sure your back is straight. Okay. You want to make sure it's as straight as it possibly can. When you breathe in, you 
You want to make sure you feel it in the lower belly if you're doing a Vedic breathing technique. If you're doing a Taoist breathing technique where your emperor is calling the generals, that means your navel is trying to touch your, when you breathe in, your navel is trying to touch your spine. Then you want to make sure you feel it up your upper back. If you are focusing on where or you're listening to, or trying to find uh, which way the air is moving in your technique, then you will feel the air going, you'll feel the energy moving up your back, governor, and then down the front. If you do it and you watch the air, the energy go that way, fine. Um, if you can reverse it, you want to take control of where the energy is going, which of course, you must be careful, um, then you would reverse it. You go up the, up the center, the center line of the body, and then back down the spine. Inception vessel, inception, inception vessel is the back, sorry, inception vessel is the front, and the governor vessel is in the back. Um, this is called microcosmic orbit. The microcosmic orbit is the orbit of the energy that goes up the spine and down the front. Uh, it starts in the center. Of the, it, it actually starts for most people in the pit of the stomach, what they call the lower dantian, okay, um, the lower jowl. And then it goes from there all the way up the back into the top of the head. And that's why you put uh, your tongue in the roof of your mouth so you complete the circuit. And then it comes all the way back down to the front. Um, we breathe this way in order to I would breathe this way in order to gather essence. Now, when you're doing this, when you're doing this motion, okay, uh, many things might happen, especially when you start focusing on your lower dantian, which is going to be where your um, your bladder's at, and where your um, for men, where one of their sexual glands are at. That being said, when you do this type of motion, when you do this type of breathing, okay, you might feel, especially in the morning, you might feel that your, uh, your phallus is uh, growing and that you're becoming aroused. Um, this needs to be controlled. Uh, you, and you control it by the breathing. And when, they, when it comes up, you use the breathing to bring it back down. And there are some Tibetan techniques that are used, very special techniques that are used. There's some Tuna and Daoyin techniques that are used to also rechange the direction or the flow of the energy that is causing one to become erect, which is a energy which is trying to, you know, to breathe. This is the energy that is you. It's everything that you are. And that's what makes semen. And that's what makes the egg. It's every piece of what you are. But you're trying to redirect the energy that would actually create semen. That would actually create um, the fluid that those moves the semen. And you're going to take that energy, you're going to redirect it back into the body to power it, to give it more longevity. And then, of course, once it gets strong enough, to store it in your lower dantian, where you'll be able with time to use it to do other things with through the Extraordinary Meridian System, which you can hear about in many shows, the best explanation we've ever had for a show for it. It's in the Temple Underground Radio Station show, The Voodoo We Do. It's the uh, third, that's the second show, the third show of The Voodoo We Do. And you might want to uh, take up that show. In the meantime, look, you see the techniques that I'm using for breathing. Notice the stillness. Okay? It's not because I'm thinking about stillness. <laughs> it's because I am focusing on my breath. Focusing on my breath. Again, I'm using the Wisdom Mudra. As I practice and work harder on what I'm doing, you're going to find that I am getting stiller and stiller. It's almost as if everything's moving around me, but I'm not moving. This is, it took a while to get here, but it doesn't have to take that long. Mine was mostly hit or miss. Um, notice again, the routine that I'm doing is, uh, uh, no way, sorry, is uh, both nostrils, and then I'm going to one nostril and then another nostril. Uh, this is important, and it's not that hard, not that easy. So cool. you want to work it as best you can. Uh, practice, practice, practice. Ten thousand hours. Ten thousand hours. That's what you have to do this for. Ten thousand hours. And again, what's the secret? Being able to sit for at least one hour. In this session, even though it seems long, it's only twelve minutes. I'm only sitting seated for 12 minutes and they say that uh, gravity has nothing to do with weight or mass it's something it's a way of measuring but uh, it's more way of measuring not weight or or size it's a way of measuring time and time is constructed time is made from the degradation of the body from the decay of something which exists within time in that sense, time has to be witnessed. And in that sense, time is constructed mainly, at least as we connect with it, constructed by your perception. When you slow yourself down to the breathing techniques that you see here, 
you will be controlling time because you'll be controlling the uh, breakdown of your body. You'll be lessening the ability for your body to actually destroy itself with the decay. You're actually giving it life. You're reversing its effect. And if you do it long enough, you can reach your reticular activating system. If you're doing that, you are actually affecting your limbic system. You're affecting your limbic system. Um, for your group, you're affecting every single aspect of your physical being. And eventually, your sense of consciousness, your sense of control through consciousness, the lessening of unconscious ability, and the more raising of the awareness of the conscious self. When you're doing this, boys and girls, you are really getting deep into what you're talking about, and it's done through stilling, stilling the body. And yoga is a very interesting thing because yoga from the Vedic sect does strengthen martial skills very much. It really does. But what it really does, okay, is that it gives you the power of perception, deep, deep perception. Your awareness grows. Your awareness of the inner verse, which is your body, and then the awareness of the outer verse. And you start to be able to control your moral behavior. Not that you can see it, because you're a witness, you're part of it. But as others can see you, you're controlling the way you think. You're controlling the way you act. You're controlling the way you feel. And the thinking is in the upper jaw, in the head. And the doing is in the lower jaw, in the body. The thinking is nourished through meditation and through reflection and reading and research. The lower jaw is, as Neil Simply Neil discusses and talks about in the Buddha We Do show, um, it's about the feeding of the body, the nurturing of the body, the strengthening of the body. And then with those two things strong, emotions, which is the connection of sky and heaven, heaven and earth, um, it can be now controlled. And once that's controlled, perceived, open, and expanded. And once this happens, the individual becomes more because he becomes bigger and aware of a larger thing than him or herself. This is what stilling meditation is all about. It's about knowing self and then eventually being true to that knowledge and then treating others in accordance with the process of gaining that knowledge. And the stilling meditation that we do in this first video is the beginnings of Western long boxing's understanding of the Eastern, Western, North, and South Chinese and European way of doing things. Um, it works. It very much works. Um, but you got to be true to it. Your diet has to be consistent with it. Uh, the dietary concerns with this mostly is making sure that you are seeing a doctor. I'm not going to even go into that. You must see a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. Okay? You must see a, um, a uh, real Western doctor to check out where you're at, where you're at. Uh, make sure you're healthy. You have to uh, um, get assistance in this way. Um, you have to understand that you must seek help to make sure you get to where you have to. You're doing that already by looking at this video, and hopefully this video will begin you on your journey with still in meditation and mastery within the Western long boxing system.